All right, this video is about um, sine and cosine graphs and putting all the transformations together in one equation. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is analyze the equation you get. So notice A is here, B is the coefficient of x, C is added or subtracted to, to whatever x is, and D is out here. Same thing with cosine, A, B, C, and D. So you have to know what the specific letters will do to your graph, all right? A and D. Well, A will be multiplied by your y, and then you add whatever d is. So what's happening is a is going to affect your y value, which will, in essence, affect that changes your range. Okay? So it affects your y value, which in essence will change your range. So when you write your little formula for each equation, you're going to do y times whatever a is, in parentheses, because you've got to do that first, then add whatever d is, add or subtract whatever d is. Now the b and c coefficients, okay, those are going to affect your x values. Okay, and remember, it's always the opposite of logic. Okay, and in essence, it's going to... Um, shift your graph left and right, okay? And it's going to affect your period. Not the domain, but it affects the period of your, of your uh, equation, whatever you have, okay? So make sure you make note of that. So in, in the formula, we'll do formulas today on our equations. We'll take whatever x is, divide it by whatever b is, and then add or subtract whatever the opposite of C is, right? It's the opposite. So if you subtract C here, I have to add C here. It's the opposite, okay? Let's do some examples. All right, so here's my equation. Three sine of X minus pi over two. So I have an A, B is one, right? C is negative pi over two, and then D is, my zero, is zero. All right, so what's the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is three. The period is 2 pi divided by b, which in this case b is just 1, so my period is just 2 pi. The domain um, is still negative infinity, positive infinity. It's not going to change. Range, let's hold on for range. Let's figure out our points. So when I write my formula, I'm going to do y times a, which is 3, plus or minus d. Well, there is no d. All right, that's y. And for x, I have to divide by b. Well, x divided by 1, that's not going to change, plus or minus c. Well, c is a minus here, so I switch the sign, plus pi over 2. All right, so this is what I need for x, and this is what I need for y. So I go back to my parent points for sign, and I apply these changes. All right, so for 0, 0, well, 0 plus pi over 2 is going to give me pi over 2. For the y is 0, what? 0 times 3 is 0. Next point, all right? X coordinate, I'm going to add pi over 2. So pi over 2 plus pi over 2 gives me 2 pi over 2, which is just pi, right? So pi, and then for the y value, 1 times 3 is 3. Next one, I have, uh, no, sorry, I have pi plus pi over 2. Okay, get your common denominator of 2. So that gives me 3 pi over 2. The y value is 0 times 3, which is 0. The next one, I have 3, I'm sorry, 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 gives me 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. And the y is negative 1 times 3, so that makes that negative 3. And then my last point is 2 pi plus pi over 2. Okay, so common denominator 2 would make this uh, 4 pi over 2 plus pi, makes that 5 pi over 2, and then the y value is 0, 0 times 3 is 0. All right, so I have my new parent points, or new points to plot, so I'm going to plot those, okay? At pi over 2, it's 0, and then I have pi, then I have 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and 5 pi over 2, All right? At pi over 2, I'm at 0. Here I'm at 3. 
3 pi over 10 is 0. At 2 pi, I'm at negative 3. And at 5 pi, I'm back at 0. So notice my curve has shifted to the right. Putting those arrows, because it's really going on forever in both directions. But this is what it looks like. So now, you can see the domain better. You can see it's going on left and right. Forever. There's no breaks in it, so it's negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, what's the lowest x value? Well, it's negative 3. What's the highest x value? A positive 3. And it's bracketed because it contains those. All right? Let's try another one. Cosine this time. All right? Um, A is negative 2. B is 1, looks like. C is my is C is 0. There is no C. How do you know that? Because it's not in parentheses. C is always going to be in parentheses, guys. So this minus 3 is my D. All right, so it's going to affect the y values. So let's look at this. Amplitude is 2. Remember, it's the absolute value of this negative 2, which is 2. Period is 2 pi divided by b, which is 1 in this case. Domain and range, we'll do those at the end. All right, so when I do my formula, what's happening to my x values? Well, x divided by b, which is 1, plus or minus c. Well, there's no c. So x is going to stay exactly the same. For the y value, I do y times a, which is negative 2, so negative 2 times y, do that first, and then plus or minus whatever d is. We said it's minus 3. So I'm going to take my y values, multiply by negative 2, and subtract 3. So look at your parent points for cosine. The first one is 0, 1. Well, x, we said, is really not changing. 0 divided by 1 plus 0 is still 0. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 minus 3 gives me negative 5. The next point, pi over 2 for x, that's not going to change. And the y is 0, so 0 times negative 2 is still 0. Minus 3, however, is minus 3. Next point, x coordinate stays the same. Negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. Minus 3 gives me negative 1. The next point is at 3 pi over 2. 0 times negative 2 is 0. Minus 3 is negative 3. And then lastly, x is 2 pi. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Minus 3 more is negative 5. So I have my new points, so let's graph these. So negative 5. All right, and my x coordinates are staying the same, 0 pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. All right, so let's plot these. 0 is negative 5. Pi over 2, I'm at negative 3. At pi, I'm at negative 1. 3 pi over 2, I'm at negative 3. And at 2 pi, I'm back down to negative 5. So this curve is a cosine curve. Remember, it goes on forever. So you put your little arrows on the end. And now you can see lowest y value and highest y value. So now we can address domain and range. Well, domain are x values, right? Since the arrows are going left and right and they're not stopping, it's just negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, lowest y value is negative 5. Well, what's the highest y value? If you can't see it from your graph, look at your points. The highest y value is negative 1. Okay? So do that part last, right? Let's try another one. This one's got all kinds of goodies going on. All right, A is 6. B is 1 half. All right, so notice that's 1x over 2. So B is 1 half. C is, is pi over 4. And then D is negative 2. Lots of stuff going on here. Amplitude, let's see, a 6 period is going to be pi, is going to be 2 pi divided by 1 half. Well, that means i got to flip the bottom. So that means my period will be 4 pi. Domain and range, let's deal with that in a minute. All right, let's come up with our little formula for um, x values. Okay, we said x divided by b. Well, if I'm dividing x by b, let's see what happens. x divided by 1 half, well, if I flip it over, I really am just going to do 2 times x, right? So I'm going to put it as 2 times x plus or minus c. Well, c in the equation is a positive 
pi over 4, so I'm going to subtract pi over 4. That's my x coordinate. For the y coordinate, it's, it's y times whatever a is, so 6 times y, plus or minus whatever d is. Well, d is negative 2. Okay, so let's take one point at a time and apply all these changes. x coordinate, all right? So I take my x times 2, 0 times 2 is 0, minus pi over 4 gives me negative pi over 4. All right, the y value, 0 times 6 is 0, minus 2 is minus 2. Next point, so we did this point. Pi over 2 times 2 is 2 pi over 2, which is just pi, right? So now I have pi, I have to subtract pi over 4. Well, get you a common denominator. That leaves me at 3 pi over 4. All right, now the y value. 1 times 6 is 6, minus 2 is 4. Next one, we did this point. Now, pi times 2 is 2 pi, minus pi over 4. Okay, common denominator of 4 means that the numerator becomes an 8. So that gives me 7 pi over 4. And 0 for the y value, 0 times 6 is 0, minus 2 is negative 2. Okay, we did this point. All right, the next one. 3 pi over 2 times 2 gives me 6 pi over 2 minus pi over 4. Again, common denominator of 4 means I have to make that 12 pi over 4. So I multiply top and bottom by 2 minus pi over 4 which gives me 11 pi over 4. That's my x coordinate. The y coordinate is negative 1, so negative 1 times 6 is negative 6, minus 2 more is negative 8. All right, so this point's done. The next one, 2 pi times 2 gives me 4 pi minus pi over 4. Okay, again, common denominator, so I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by 4. That's gonna make this 16 pi over 4. Minus pi over 4 gives me 15 pi over 4. Y coordinate is 0. 0 times 6 is 0. Minus 2 is negative 2. All right, we've done all that crazy math. Let's graph this. Negative pi over 4. And then at 3 pi over 4, just putting in my x values. 7 pi over 4. 11 pi over 4. 15 pi over 4. Okay, and then the y values, look at this. It goes from negative 2 all the way down to negative 8. And all the way up to positive 4. Okay, it's crazy. All right, so negative 2 first. So it starts here. At 3 pi over 4, I'm up at 4. 7 pi over 4, I'm at negative 2. 11 pi over 4, I'm at negative 8, and at 15 pi over 4, I'm back to negative 2. So you can see your sine curve. So if I connect this, this is really doing this shape right here. Okay, so there's your sine curve. And now we can address domain and range. Domain is x coordinates, right? Going on forever, left and right. No changes there. The range. All right, what's the lowest y value? Well, it's down here at negative 8. And yes, it exists, so I'm going to put a bracket. Highest y value is up here at positive 4. So a lot of work on these. They can get complex, but you know all the steps. So take the time to write the formulas. On some of the work today, you're going to just write the formula. You're not going to come up with the new points. You're just going to write for me what's the formula you would use. Okay, I want you to try this one on your own, and we'll start with this one when you get to class.